now we're going to be talking about Enceladus. Enceladus, I don't know how you, uh, that sounds like a salad in Spanish. So I'm, I call it Enceladus. Uh, but it's pretty cool. I, I've actually talked about this before. Um, and I was reading this and I was like, this is pretty cool. I love space stuff. And let's get into it. Mysterious levels of methane on Enceladus not explainable with known geochemical processes. We recently devoted an article on Jupiter's four largest moons explaining why are uh, they are among the most exciting worlds of our solar system. Jupiter has some steep competition from Saturn in this area though, and one of them has just got a lot more industry. Well, uh, interesting. We're talking about Saturn's sixth largest moon, Enceladus. A mysterious process hidden a, uh, in a potential subsurface ocean <laughs> uh, subsurface ocean deep underneath its icy shell produces lots of methane that cannot be accounted for with known geochemical processes. So is some form of life responsible for all this methane? According to a new study published in Nature, it cannot be ruled out. And here, of course, is a picture of Enceladus. Being one of Saturn's 82 moons, it isn't easy to stand out. Not so for Enceladus, though. Not only is it almost entirely covered with fresh, clean ice, making it one of the most reflective bodies in the entire solar system. It also produces giant water plumes containing methane with a mysterious origin. In recent decades, studies have shown uh, that beneath the icy surface of the seemingly inhospitable moon, there is an ocean in which contains um, conditions may be favorable for the emergence and maintenance of life. Obviously, this potential subsurface ocean has caught the attention of many researchers. Now, this is what I, I've talked about before. Do they really exist? And if they do, wouldn't it make sense that we could assume that there could be some sort of life down there? Uh, we don't really know. Uh, one of the main instruments astronomers have at their disposal to study Enceladus is the Cassini spacecraft. On a mission where it flew through the moon's vast water plumes, sampling their chemical makeup, it identified a relatively high concentration of specific molecules associated with hydrothermal vents at the bottom of Earth's oceans respectively, dihydrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide. The quantity of methane detected in the plumes was unexpected. Associate Professor Regis Ferrer of the University of Arizona and one of the lead authors of this study, Reese, uh, of this recent study stated in a press release that he and his team were determined to find out if Earth-like microbes known to consume dihydrogen and produce methane could be responsible for the identified methane spikes. According to Ferrer, it would, it would require highly challenging deep dive missions to search for such microbes, known as uh, methanogens. Missions like that are sadly not in sight for several decades and would have to overcome many challenges. So Ferrer and his colleagues decided on taking a different route within our current capabilities. The team construction uh, constructed mathematical models to calculate the probability that different processes, including uh, biology, uh, biological uh, methan methanogenesis, might explain the Cassini data. They implemented new mathematical models that consolidate microbial ecology and geochemistry to investigate Cassini plume data and model the potential processes that would best explain the observations. The scientists concluded that Cassini's data are consistent with microbial hydrothermal vent activity and processes that don't require life forms, but are distinct from those known to transpire here on Earth. Okay, so at the time when I discussed this last time, because I did actually cover a lot of this stuff, they didn't prove that. So now they're concluding that Cassini's data, uh, data is consistent with the microbial hydrothermal vents. So I actually talked about that, saying it makes sense that there are uh, the, these vents down at the bottom, but now they're saying there's no other explanation. Now there's amazing bacteria and shrimps and life that lives and feeds and gets its energy from these vents down at the bottom of our oceans, not from the sun, but from the vent itself. So it's safe to assume that there is life living in these subsurface oceans in, in, in Enceladus. Methane can be produced through so-called hydrothermal activity on our planet, 
but only at a very slow rate. The majority of methane produced on Earth is generated with the help of microorganisms that utilize the chemical dis dis uh, disequilibrium of hydrothermally produced dihydrogen as a source of energy. Methane is then produced from carbon dioxide in a process called methanogenesis. The team looked at Enceladus plume composition at the end result of several chemical and physical processes taking place in the moon interior. Now here is an image from Cassini showing these plumes. You can see them there. Uh, first, the researchers estimated what hydrothermal production of dihydrogen would best fit Cassini's observations, and if this production could produce enough food to support a population of Earth-like hydro, um, hydrogenothropic methogens, methanogens. Excuse me. Uh, to do that, they constructed a model for the population dynamics of a theoretical hydrogenothropic metho, methanogen. Oh, tongue twisters. Um, whose thermal and energetic niche was modeled after familiar strains we encounter here on Earth. Subsequently, the authors ran their model to discern whether an assigned set of chemical conditions, such as the dihydrogen concentration in the hydrothermal fluid, and temperatures, or temperature that would provide an appropriate environment for these microbes to thrive. The team also studied what impact a theoretical microbe population would have on its surroundings, for example, on the escape rates of dihydrogen and methane in the plume. All in all, not only could the researchers assess whether Cassini's measurements are agreeable with the environment suited for life, but they could also make quantitative predictions about observations to be expected, such as metho. Uh, methogenesis actually happening at the floor of Enceladus subsurface oceans. The results suggest that even the highest possible estimate of abiotic methane production or methane production without biological aid based on known hydrothermal chemistry is far from sufficient to explain the methane concentration measured in the plumes. Adding biological methogenesis to the mix, however, could produce enough methane to match Cassini's observations. Here's a quote uh, from Ferrer. Obviously, we are not concluding that life exists in Enceladus's oceans. Rather, we want to understand how likely it would be that Enceladus hydrothermal vents could be habitable to Earth-like microorganisms. Uh, very likely, the Cassini data, data tell us, according to our models. The biological methogenesis appears to be compatible with the data. In other words, we can't discard a life hypothesis as highly improbable. To reject the life hypothesis, we need more data from future missions. Now, I know for um, previous research that they don't have anything set in stone, um, but they are, of course, pushing for this because we, I, I personally would love to know. I, I can't wait to find out. Uh, I believe personally that there is hydrothermal vents down at the bottom and with this new data saying that just the hydrothermal vents wouldn't be enough to produce the amount of methane that we're seeing from the cassini data so something's going and something's producing this methane which is uh, a it is a natural uh, occurring gas but in high quantities it tends to be from biological life which is just exciting stuff i can't wait to prove or to see proof that life exists outside of our little blue dot.